I would describe Kaju Kembo as a devastating art because it teaches you all aspects of martial arts. You got judo, jiu jitsu, kempo, Chinese boxing, kung fu. It's just not like learning only judo, learn how to fall. Jiu jitsu learns uh, the techniques of grabbing. It's like putting you in any kind of scenarios on the street, and if somebody attack you from all different angles, that's the reason why you got that octagon that he had designed in the back of our uniform to signify you can defend yourself in any given situation, offensive, defensive, and all different angles of defense. So using and applied any techniques, no matter if you're lying down, sitting down, sitting at the beach, standing up in a car, your techniques is usable for any different direction than just doing judo. So you cannot do judo if you're in a car. You can't throw anybody down. But Kaju Kembo is a, is a self-defense that can teach you everything from hand-to-hand -hand combat, um, jiu-jitsu takedowns, judo takedowns, Kempo style, inner fighting, outside fighting, uh, grappling, everything it is. So it's like a one-stop shop for, for martial arts, as I see different from everybody else. So it's a different, plus made in Hawaii. <laughs> and when it's, if it's made in Hawaii, because the brutal part of it is Everybody have to survive on the street, and every day is a fighting, fighting kind of um, situation here in Hawaii because you got to survive. So you learn how to fight, learn how to defend, and learn how to, you know, defend your family and protect your family. Just like you make a twelve step. Twelve step is you moving like one. No matter what you do, front by going the twelve step, you miss oh, two. Yeah. Yeah. So you miss one. Inhale, two. Inhale, three. Well, when he started training secretly, you know, in like uh, abandoned warehouses with the, the other co-founders, they started sharing ex experience with each other of all these techniques. And um, when they went off to war, had the Korean War, when they all left and Emperor stayed back, then he started visualizing things, how he's going to put all these techniques together, which he had training with jiu-jitsu, with the judo, and Chinese boxing, kung fu. And he kind of put it to sense that he... he breaking it down as the Kaju Kembo system. So you name it, Karate, Judo, Jiu Jitsu, Kempo, Chinese Boxing, Kung Fu. Okay, now we're gonna do the side of the cross. This is the side of the cross. So he chose a punch, okay? Just like this portion. We go in motion from the face to the groin, from the right shoulder to the left shoulder. Just practicing the strengths. Okay, all that. Okay, this is for your blocks, this is for your strikes, this is for your combination growing elbow. Okay, get closer <sighs> to each other. One, pop, lift, one, two. Even if you throw the straight and forward, you can punch from the side. You gauge it. You hit this way. Right up top of the side. If you throw the right hand, right hand punch, that's what you need. If you throw the left or right hand punch, same thing. Break from there. Bam! Inside. That's why you're going to work anywhere you want. Okay. Boom! 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 Attention, salute. If he's a six degree, his hand goes on top. Anybody higher than a six degree or fifth degree goes on top. If you're the same color, your hand goes on the side as equal to the same. That's how you shake and respect each other. If he's a second degree, okay, and he's a purple belt, let's say, second degree on top. Higher ranking is always higher ranking than that.
getting into martial arts, uh, my dad, I was having, uh, being picked on in school. Uh, I came back from overseas. I had an English accent and uh, being picked on in school. He, uh, my dad said, oh, you're gonna go walk up by the hospital and go to this conditioning unit, these Quonson huts behind the hospital and there'll be a big uh, black man there, about 6'4", 230 pounds. He's gonna teach you judo. And I went there and I was the only kid, uh, student of uh, Sergeant George Harris uh, who trained military personnel on the Air Force Base. Uh, also, he was an Olympian and uh, Pan American Game uh, gold medalist. And I trained with him for a year, uh, starting out with the falling ways and uh, foot sweeps and outside leg throws, this and that. Um, so I was an assistant instructor in his first kids class that uh, he started up. That was what my one year prep was for. Basically, he was training me to uh, be an Olympian, which he was also training to be an Olympian because he knew judo was going to make it into the Olympics someday because it was a sport. And uh, he did go to the 64, 1964 Olympics in uh, Japan. Uh, did well in the competition, but that's what got me started. And basically, I was involved in the military all my life, uh, from uh, being a child, a dependent of somebody that was in the military, traveled. He was involved in World War II and Korea. Um, and after I graduated from high school, there was a conflict going on in the uh, Eastern, Eastern Theater. Um, so I joined the Navy. And from that point on, I just volunteered. They said, we need volunteers. I raised my hand. Most people take a step back. I take, I kept volunteering. You had to get into SEAL team and that type of work is all voluntary. You have to volunteer to get into it. And I wanted action, so I went, uh, joined underwater demolition. I was, uh, made uh, two tours to Vietnam. My first one with underwater demolition team 11. Did a bunch of, uh, sub ops and night recons and uh, this and that. And then they needed some more um, manpower in the SEAL team and I, I went from underwater demolition into SEAL team one. I, I just help people. I help people through, through training and, and that helped me get through it because I was helping other people. I, I think that if I don't push my body physical, physically, mentally, and my spirit, if they break, if I let them break my spirit down, I won't have the drive. I, I might as well quit. So I push myself physically, mentally, spiritually to have it. I had to develop it. I had to get in touch with it. Most people have it already. It's the eternal life force. Your adrenaline, your adrenaline, your chi, your your energy, uh, as a young man, I didn't, I wasn't not in touch with that, only through my martial arts training to, oh yeah, well you're gonna tap out with a little arm bar or, or a little choke out or something like that, or do you push yourself to almost the point of blacking out, you know? Can you resist that choke that long? Ooh. Ooh. Um, I wasn't in touch with any feelings or emotions at that point in my life. I was just this Navy, you know, uh, ex-Navy SEAL. And I had all my ribbons and all my pictures in a shoebox and I never told anybody anything about it. What I had done or where I had been. Uh, because it wasn't a popular thing. Vietnam was not a very popular thing. So I, you don't come back and tell people you're a combat vet and go to college and stuff like that. It, it was taboo. No. Four. Five. Six. Seven.
Nine. Ten. Ten. 